this week's show, Georgia Southern Offensive Coordinator Brian Cook sits down with the media. We also hear from head coach Tyson Summers, as well as Georgia Southern men's and women's basketball highlights. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles. Eagles can't fight if they're blue, blue, white. Eagles can't fight if they're blue, blue, white. Eagles can't fight, Georgia Southern putting on the best show of your life. And welcome to another episode of the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, basketball, two wins in a row at Hanner, a couple of exciting games, but football takes the the headlines and the front page usually when anything's going on. And once again, this week we had a chance to finally hear from offensive coordinator Brian Cook and Tyson Summers spoke as well about a number of topics, but uh, primarily talking a little bit about the offense, the offensive hires and what we can expect this fall coming up. And I think we're still a little bit, you know, wondering what exactly the offense will look like, but it does does sound like there's gonna be some under center option, which we haven't seen in quite a while, as well as some option out of the shotgun. Well, overall, I think you have to be excited if you're a Georgia Southern fan, especially if you're one of the traditional fans who wanted to see a specific kind of offense. I know Georgia Southern fans take immense pride in this offense, what it's able to do and the way it's able to do it. And you look at Brian Cook, a guy who has plenty of experience, not only under Paul Johnson running a very familiar offense to Georgia Southern fans, but running his own brand of option offense back in his Cal Poly days. And I think that's where you're going to see some new ideas mixed with some old. They mentioned at the press conference, maybe a 70-30, 75-25 split of shotgun, uh, gun option as Summers would call it, versus maybe a more traditional looking uh, under center, possibly uh, flex bone looking option. And I think that that gives Georgia Southern uh, an ability to play to its strengths. That's how it's recruited before. That's how it's won before. It's where its identity comes from. And at the end of the day, what really matters is winning, but when you've got a proven uh, a game plan, a proven blueprint of how to win, I think it makes sense to go maybe not right back to the same exact old tricks, but something similar that you know you can win with. Yeah, all the strategies in the world aren't going to help you, though, if you don't have someone under center that you can count on. That's the big question now. Will it be somebody who's here right now or somebody they are going after recruiting wise? We don't know. The recruiting day is about a month away. So we'll know maybe a little bit more about the body types and things like that when we see the recruiting class, how many quarterbacks are selected. But let's get right out and hear from our new offensive coordinator at Georgia Southern, Brian Cook. Uh, really excited to be here. Uh, I think uh, from everything I've heard about Georgia Southern, which dates back a, a long time, to, to be at a place where you know the, the history that's here with the six national championships and the, the conference titles, uh, just you know to walk into a place where you're held to a high standard every day, you know, is uh, is a tremendous opportunity. I think it's a great group of guys to walk into the room with, to uh, to be alongside in terms of the coaches and the players, and just. Really looking forward uh, to going through the process here. Coach, how much did you turn to Coach Johnson for some advice before taking the job here at Georgia Southern? Uh, and if so, what did he tell you? And over the course of four years, you know, being in a room with Paul Johnson and Mike Seawalk and, you know, uh, Blake DeBartolo played here. And, you know, so I, I had a good feel for, for what the place was and the culture, you know, and that. Uh, you know, he, he had mentioned that this is a place where, you know, winning's important and uh, and you're you're around guys where football is important. And uh, this is a town not just with the players and the coaches, but to the town, to the community. It's it's a big part of the, the DNA here. And, uh, and, and so, you know, I, I had a pretty good idea kind of what I was getting into, uh, or at least I hope I do. Um, and that's that's really what excited me about the challenge. You know, I would like to be a, a no huddle team, and and how fast we go from a tempo standpoint will really probably be driven by depth at certain positions. You know, so I know where we want to get to with that, but uh, how quickly and and how you know how soon we're going to be able to go at a at a good tempo, I'm I'm not sure. I think that'll depend on the depth that we have, and I don't know that yet. I think we need to get out to spring practice and and see who we have and see how recruiting finishes up. And but I know where we want to go, 
you know, and uh, I think it will be. It's it's going to be a gun option attack with um, the ability to get under center and and do some of the things that that, that brings to the table. I, you know, in an ideal world, to be able to do both those things. Um, and still have an identity and be good at that, that'll be the challenge. And, and uh, we've got to make sure that we're conscious of that. And, uh, and to do that and do it fast, I think, is, is something. And it's not always fast. You know, you don't, when you're no huddle, it doesn't always need to be fast. But uh, to do that and, you know, vary from snap to snap, I think, is a, is a unique thing. Franklin Chevrolet is the GM giant. Shop one of the largest GM inventories in Georgia. New Chevys, Buicks, GMCs, and Cadillacs. Over 500 new and pre-owned vehicles all under one roof. You won't find a bigger GM selection around. We have the inventory. You get the savings. Drive Silverado 1500 crew cabs for $339 a month or Sierra crew cabs for $339 a month. Plus, we'll deliver the vehicle directly to you. Find it at Franklin Chevrolet, the GM giant in Statesboro and FranklinChevrolet.com. Well, moving on to basketball, we have the Georgia Southern men making things pretty interesting the last couple games at Hanner Fieldhouse. The women uh, lost a high-scoring game to Troy, but let's start with the guys, Mike, and your thoughts on how they've been playing lately. Undefeated and, and on top by themselves in the Sun Belt standings. Right, the Eagles had some ups and downs in the non-conference schedule, just seven and six there, but considering how often they were playing away from home, the quality of the teams that they were playing, can't be too disappointed about that, although they probably did let a few slip through their fingers. The good news is those close games that they weren't able to win in non-conference, they're able to win them in conference play. That's when it really counts. 3-0, and as you mentioned, the only undefeated team. They're all alone at the top of the conference, and this is what they had to do. You look at the schedule, there's 18 conference games, so nine home, nine, nine away. The first three were all at home, and you want to set the tone early. You want to defend your home court. That's what Georgia Southern was able to do, maybe a little closer than they expected. But then again, this is shaping up to be a better and deeper conference than what we've seen in the last couple of years. As for the women, they played Troy, a pretty high-scoring game, pretty high-scoring team they took on. Back and forth, back and forth, they ended up losing. But uh, did get some points up, and there were plenty of positives to come out of that loss. Right, some encouragement there. You don't want to take too many moral victories when you're a team that really is mainly concerned with putting some more wins on the board. But after two disappointing losses, probably two losses that they felt like they should have won against Georgia State and South Alabama, then there's a game with Troy coming to town, the defending Sunbelt champions, the overwhelming favorites to take it again this year. Nobody gives them a chance at all, and they were down by 20 in that game. Coach Kip Drown says that you know it would have been easy to roll over. He's seen the team roll over in spots like that before, but that's not how it happened this time. They fight almost all the way back. They got it within three at one point. Troy just a little bit too much, but Georgia Southern's got to be able to look at that game film, see that they were able to hang with a Troy team who not only is that good, but who didn't have a bad game. They were playing at Troy's level. If they can match that intensity against many of the other teams in the Sun Belt, it's going to get a lot better for the Eagles. All right, well, let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights. Georgia Southern playing the first of two at Hanner Fieldhouse. Saturday against Troy, ladies first. The Eagles up, but Troy coming back. Caitlin Ramirez finishes for the Trojans. Georgia Southern back, Angel McGowan, the hoop and the foul. Later, McGowan will spot up and drain three more of her 19 points in the ball game. More from downtown, Patrice Butler, three of her 24 in the game. Eagles by three, but again, here come the Trojans. Amber Rivers finishes. The Eagles winning the rebound battle. Butler with 11 to go with her 24 points here with the putback. Sierra Butler, one of four Eagles in double figures. She'd have 14 points. Amanda Mendoza with one of her four three-pointers for Troy. Troy by four, but the Eagles answer. Nice look, Alexis Sams to Patrice Butler. Alexis Brown then heats up first inside for two, then outside for three. She'd finish the game with 17 points, but it wouldn't be enough. Kayla Robinson coming through with the layup, and Troy wins 89 to 86. To the guys' game we go. The Eagles looking to stay on top of the conference standings. B.J. Gladden starts things off with Georgia Southern going strong to the bucket here. 
Juan Davis on the other end, three of his 21 for Troy. Jake Allsmiller, one of five Eagles in double figures, hitting for three of his 11 points in the game. Tukey Brown next off the steal. He goes in for the jam. Sean O'Connell then comes up with the rebound, the putback, and the foul. Gladden continuing to penetrate, and he'd finish with 10 points in the game. Ike Smith chips in with 13 points and four rebounds. Devontae Boykins left alone. Hits the three, and the Eagles take a four-point lead. But Troy cuts into the lead. Alex Hicks, the putback jam. Smith right back for the Eagles, coming up with the layup, knifing through the defense. Tukey Brown leading the way with 24 points for Georgia Southern. Just before the end of the half, Coy Simmons puts the exclamation point on the Eagles' 37-31 lead. We move ahead to the second half. And Georgia Southern starting out red hot. Mike Hughes hits the three-pointer. Troy answers with Jordan Varnado. But the Eagles right back. Hughes to Ike Smith, who knows how to finish strong. Hughes later will drain the fadeaway jumper. And finally, it's Tukey Brown. Three more for the Eagles. And Georgia Southern goes on to win 86-82. Saturday. Well, before we go, we want to congratulate Eagle great Adrian Peterson on his election to the College Football Hall of Fame. No surprise, the illustrious career that he had still owns so many records and you know, if they would have counted some of the postseason games early on in his career, who knows where those numbers would be. But a great guy and a, a great player and ambassador for Georgia Southern. Yeah, I'd have to go back and uh, double check to make sure that I'm right here. But some very impressive names uh, going along side of Adrian Peterson into the Hall of Fame with him. Steve Spurrier, Peyton Manning, Brian Erlacher, former teammate with the Bears. Marshall Falk and Marshall Falk, a great running back. I do think that if you add up all the rushing yardage, of everybody else in this Hall of Fame class, I think Adrian Peterson's 9,000 playoffs included. I think he might have more than everybody else in a stacked Hall of Fame class combined. You know, I mean, it's tough to outrush Peyton Manning, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was known for that. Well, congratulations once again to Adrian Peterson, and uh, we hope to get him on pretty soon the next time he comes in around the Statesboro area. I think he's supposed to be here next month. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you.